Do you feel that in a time when we are more connected than ever, we are drifting away from real human connections, especially to ourselves? I do. Hi, I'm Leticia Latino, and I want to invite you to join me and my very inspiring guests in exploring ways to reconnect to your essence, to your definite purpose, to what makes you tick. Are you ready? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Back to Basics, reconnecting to the essence of you. Today, we have Kristen Stelzer. She's a writer, consultant, and she owns her own content and copywriting company. Before becoming a professional writer, Kristen spent two decades as a civil engineer and a project manager. Talk about a career change, huh? This gives her a unique perspective and purview to her writing. Her clients range from international tech companies to local government contractors. Her specialty, however, and this is exciting for me and this is how we met, is in wireless and women-owned companies. Hello, Kristen. How are you doing? Hello, Atisha. I'm fine. Thanks for having me. This is pretty exciting. It's my first podcast. Well, I'm very happy, you know, that I have a nick for telling people that are going to be great guests. And the moment I had my first interaction with you, besides something else we were working on, I say I have to have her on my podcast. And I'm very, very excited that it's your first one. <laughs> All right. So I'm a little nervous, but, <laughs> no, but I'm well, game. That's, that's even better, you know, because I want whomever listens to this that has never done a podcast to know that this is fun, you know, and, and I had never done a podcast uh, less than a year ago. And now, you know, I have, I think, about 1,600 downloads of my podcast. I don't know who's listening, but obviously <laughs> someone is. And that makes me very happy. Well, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I don't know anything about podcasting other than how to record. So I don't even know if that's impressive or not. To me, it's impressive because when I started, I didn't think I would have 10 downloads and that's including my family members. <laughs> so, and turns out my family is not even listening to my podcast. So I guess uh, at least I have some people listening to it. <laughs> so Kristen, I know that uh, you've listened to a few episodes, but Basically, uh, what caught my attention when I read your profile and when I got to, to meet you is you are a civil engineer by trade. And, we, and you're going to speak about your childhood and how you got to where you are. But basically, you are doing something in life that is very different from what you studied and what you maybe thought your life was going to be. And that, to me, is always very appealing. So that's why I say I want to hear to listen to her story. And I'm very excited about it. Oh, well, great. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not doing what I expected to be doing. So that's, that's certainly correct. Oh, uh, and so who you were, who were you as a child? Oh. Uh, well, so I'm the fourth of five kids. Um, we were all born in New York, but we moved down to Florida, uh, Fort Myers when I was six. So I consider myself Floridian. I grew up there. Oh, great. Um, I get asked that a lot, or, you know, you, you are asked to think about that as you're going through big changes. Like, what were you like as a kid? And I, you know, I didn't ever have a big passion. I was an avid reader, but I didn't ever, um, I wasn't like the kid who could tell you everything there was about dinos to know about dinosaurs or everything there was to know about, you know, trains or space. Like I didn't have a passion like that. I did like to read and I was good at school and I liked school. Um, took some art lessons, you know, just kind of general, general kid stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, were you shy? Were you social? Were you... I think uh, I, I would have been much, I would have been considered shy. I um, had a few close friends, but I was not the, you know, the popular, like surrounded by a lot of people. I preferred to have a, a few close friends and that's, that's still true today. But I never, you know, like going into college and thinking about what I wanted to do, I really had no idea. I remember thinking that, you know, picking your whole life's career at 17, like that was way too big, mm -hmm. you know, because I was. I was still at that point, it was the early 90s. And so you you kind of still thought you'd have the same career your whole life. You know, that was still something that happened to people. I mean, nobody really knew that that, that was going to start changing and that wasn't going to be the way things were. So it really did feel like a life commitment to whatever I was going to do. And I wasn't sure what it was. Um, my dad encouraged me to go into engineering, which is what I did. 
Is he an and, engineer? No, uh, my dad was a, a police officer in New York, and then when he moved, when we moved to Florida, he worked in security. So, you know, blue collar. My mom um, stayed home with us until my youngest brother went to school, and then she went to um, to work in the school system. But um, she didn't have a college degree. But they both encouraged all of us to go to school. Well, civil engineers. He did encourage something well, but that's great. It's a great career. It is. Funnily enough, I um, majored in ocean engineering. I started as a civil engineer, changed my major, but have always practiced as a civil engineer. But even then, like choosing engineering wasn't like, aha, I know what I'm doing now, (laughs) Uh you know. And so when I graduated, I wasn't ready to get a real job, but I didn't want to get a master's in engineering. So I went to law school because that, I don't know, seemed like a crazy idea. I don't know. It it makes sense um, because a lot of the skills that you learn in engineering school translate into law. There's a lot of logical thinking and problem solving. And I figured maybe I'd go into trademarks and copyright, something, you know, engineering based. Um, And then life started to happen and I didn't finish. Uh, I always thought I would, but um, but I didn't. And so uh, after dabbling in some jobs in the legal field, I thought it wasn't really for me. And uh, so then I started um, working at engineering firms and I ended up in land development. So my law background was very helpful there because I was dealing with zoning and, and things like that. But um, so I'm glad I went to law school and I, I do regret a little bit not finishing, but not well, so much you not said, so much that I decided to go back. So Yeah, you um, make it sound like, oh, I dropped out. I mean, you already had a, an engineering degree. <laughs> so... Oh. Yeah, it was it was a conscious decision. I um I had gotten married to my uh, now ex husband, and uh, and we were moving a lot. And I could have finished, but I I didn't love it. You know, it wasn't. There were people I went to school with who who loved the law and wanted to wanted to be lawyers, whereas I was just sort of like I don't know what I want to do yet. So law school seems like a good place to go. So it wasn't. Um, I wasn't heartbroken about the decision. So you were, it sounds to me that in those decisions, you were kind of going with the flow that you were a good student because obviously you wouldn't have um, finished an engineering degree and then go into law school and all that. But it it started maybe to show something that you weren't that happy about it, about what you were doing. Well, no, I did enjoy it because one of the things that's pretty consistent through my life is I like solving problems and you know, figuring out puzzles and, you know, thinking about things in different ways. And so engineering is a great way to do that. But as I started working in the fields, what I knew I didn't want to do and what I saw happen to a lot of people was that they kind of get pigeonholed into a specialty. And I didn't, I knew I didn't want that. Um, I felt like that would, to me, be very boring. I wanted to have um, more of a, a breadth of knowledge and experience rather than a really deep, you know, dive into you know, a particular segment of engineering. So that's when I, um, I guess I didn't make a conscious decision to do this. It's just looking back over my history. I realized that as I was feeling like I was getting stuck, I'd start looking for the next thing. Like, how can I, um, how can I change what I'm doing so that I'm not, I'm not getting stuck. And so that's how I kind of started getting, getting into project management and then the opportunity to get into zoning rather than design came, you know, came to me. And so I went into that and I enjoyed that. And, and then I dabbled a little bit working for the government and realized that wasn't for me. And then I ended up in telecom, um, which was also, which was fun and tapped into a lot of my old skills, but there was always that, like, I, you know, what, what's next. And, um, and so, so was it was there something uh, in particular that that was that the uh, discovery moment or that aha moment into into uh, writing yeah into eventually going and and saying okay I want to get into my own company or what happened first did you say I want to have my own business and started writing or you started writing and ended up with your own business I uh, it's more of the latter. So I started learning about writing as a career and was thinking that that would be great. And I was thinking I would kind of try, try to build that on the side. And then maybe if it if it worked out, um, I could I could leave and that would give me the flexibility that I was looking for. Um, you know, I have a young son and um, and I just I kind of wanted to control my own day. And um, I don't know, I I. I've been lucky and had some really great bosses, but I always thought, yeah, you know, I'd still like to 
do things my way. I maybe I have a problem with authority. I don't know, but um, <laughs> but I wasn't really planning on just jumping in. Um, and then you know, and another thing in life just happened, and I was at this kind of crossroads where I was looking to get another job in um, in land development, and I was looking at companies, and I was just like, I just don't want to do it. Like I could do it, and it would be fine but I wouldn't really be happy doing it. And then in four years, I'd be in the same spot. So it, it was just time. Like I either I'm going to do it now or I'm never going to do it. So I just launched. And um, and that is uh, one of your questions was like, what have you ever done that's out of character? And that was absolutely it. If you had told me even two years ago, I would, or two and a half years ago, I would be doing this. I would be like, no, not me. Someone else will do that. Not me. And um, you're great at it, by the way. I mean, oh. I was so impressed. Um, hey, Kristen, yes, you interviewed me for an article. And, you know, I've, I haven't done many, but I have done a few. And many times the person that, that writes it, you know, it doesn't get what you're trying to say. And sometimes it's not straightforward, but you really uh, have an, uh, an ability to capture the essence of, of, of at least what I said. And I was very impressed. So oh, well, thank you. It, it was a... Uh... It was fun to write. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I love about writing. It's fun. And um, and it, it doesn't get boring because I, I end up writing so many different things. And so I have to learn new things. And, you know, then there's some strategy aspects, like what are we trying to do with this piece? So it's really, it's a good fit for me. Um, and, and I mean, I get you, to do all the things I like. And would you say that because, I mean, we, we talk about the childhood, but we didn't pinpoint, is, was there any dreams when you were growing up that you had something you visualized or no? Do you just consider yourself, you, you know, I was a happy kid. I was going through my childhood, but never something uh, was particularly big to say I had this dream. No, I really don't. And, and I still sometimes tell people I'm not sure what I want to do when I grow up because I, um, I, I don't have that thing. I think it's because I, I mean, if I could do it, I would just be a perpetual student. I just, I love learning new things, but there's not like one thing that I want to do forever. Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I'm with you. I love to study and I love to learn new things. And I think actually when you have a, a dream, people that do it is great because they can visualize it. But at the same time, I think limits what you can achieve because that same visualization of what you're going to be, uh, it's kind of sets in stone what you're shooting for. And then if it comes and validates in a different package, then sometimes people have problems with that. Right. Like if you've always thought or something happens and you've, it's always been your dream to be X, but then something happens where you can't do that. And how do you How do you adjust? Correct. But if you were an avid reader, then definitely the writing part, I'm not surprised about that that's something that that uh, excited you. Yeah, and uh, there was a point, it was a while ago, It was I was never even considering writing as a career. I was just doing it. I had a blog. I was dealing with some infertility issues, and, and, and it was the place that I could write, and, and there was a community of women who were all dealing with the same thing, so it was very helpful, and I enjoyed writing, and, and then there was always the way to, you know, share it as a story, um, which is really what a lot of the you know, the content and the copywriting is now it's storytelling. And so, um, so it, it's, it's been a good fit, but I certainly never would have pictured that I was coming this direction. That's, that's great. And that's why, um, that intrigued me from, from you. It's like, wow, she has such a different background and that of what she's doing that I, I was very curious about, okay, how did you get there? And, uh, and so on the day to day, Um, and the writing that you do, is there anything in particular that, that excites, in that storyteller, is there any particular story that excites you more than others? I know you focus a lot on women and their stories. I do. And, and I think the reason is because, um, you know, as, as you're familiar with growing up or not really growing up, but having a career in, um, in a male dominated field, there's, you just see things differently because you're often treated differently. And, um, and every woman's story is different. And, and I think that that is sometimes forgotten. You know, women kind of get lumped into this category of women entrepreneurs or women, you know, executives or women in, in any kind of, you know, industry or group as if they all have the same experience. And that's not true. And, um, and, 
and the other thing I like about working with women and getting to tell their stories is because women are so busy that they often won't tell them unless someone is like getting it out of them and and they should be sharing their stories and they should be on more stages and they should be um, on more panels. And so getting a chance to help with that, I, I mean, that's just hugely rewarding for me. I, I believe it. And this is a great time. I mean, I, I shouldn't say it, but I, I do feel that it's a time for women where our voice is being heard more and we've been asked our opinion. Like I'm, I'm not used to people asking to do an interview or do something and wanting to know <laughs> what yeah. my opinion is, to be honest. Um, so it, it's empowering and uh, you hear it. You hear it from other women as well, like, wow, we're finally getting a chance to to tell our story. And you're such a pivotal part of that, that that's definitely exciting. Yeah, it, it, it does certainly seem like there's a, um, it's kind of a watershed time, but I think there's also the danger that it seems more like, like, like it's a trend and, and, and it shouldn't be that. I mean, it's, but, well, it should be a trend. It should be something that becomes just normal. It shouldn't be like a thing. Um, like I'm looking forward to the day where people aren't like a female CEO. Like <laughs> she's a CEO. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like that's, um, yes. And hopefully that comes sooner, sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think we all struggle a little bit with that. And we, we discussed it when we first spoke that, uh, you know, me too, I try, I like to do things the hard way and I don't want people to put me on the label or, oh, that she owns a women owned business. Like I own a business like everybody right. else in this room, if I'm in a, in a room full of other entrepreneurs. But it seems that uh, we are in that stage where we still have to label it and hopefully in the future we will get past that. And uh, and see each business for what it is, right? And and also, I hope. I mean, as a minority, that um, and I, I talk about this with my husband often. That 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 also the majority doesn't become the minority because I don't know. You feature a lot of stories, but don't you feel sometimes that also the the norm becomes also the the diversity in a way? I don't know if I'm clear, but sometimes we are so focused on on giving the minority a space, which I'm happy because I'm in a minority, but at sometimes I also feel for the people that are not minority, that don't have special programs to look after them. Yeah. And I think that's just the unfortunate reality is when things have been skewed, it's got to skew the other way to bring things in balance. And eventually that eventually no programs will be needed and everybody will be judged on their merits. And you know, nobody will be looking at what color they are or where they came from or what their gender is, but we're not there yet. I, I absolutely agree with you. That That's exactly what I, what, when I speak with my husband about this, is I say, I think we've been too, for too long on one side of the, of, of the spectrum. And so now it's, it's almost like, let, let us take advantage of this and we are being heard. And so, um, well, but that's great. I'm, I'm so happy that, that you're such a, a great channel for those voices to be heard. And obviously I'm going to post the contact info uh, so that people can read some of your material. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no. And, and so, and actually you posted something interesting. I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but I said, this is perfect to ask her. Uh, you po posted an article about what is your why? Ah, uh, yes. That's by my, <clears throat> my friend Keith Tremel, who, um, I actually met through a writer's group, and he's also an engineer turned writer and, um, you know, has been a great mentor to me. So, you know, and you and I talked about this a little bit, like as as much as I like working with women, and it's it's important to recognize the allies that we have who are men and um, and the good men, the great mentors who, you know, who don't worry about what gender you are. They're just happy to help you. And so Keith has definitely been a, a wonderful mentor to me. And he his article about your big why was just came across my email this morning and I wanted to share it. And I, and I loved it. I mean, I say, well, that's a great question to ask her when I interview her. Yeah. Did, did that article make you think of what's your why? <laughs> uh, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, which is why I know it's an important question, uh, because I think to be an entrepreneur and to, to launch a business and do all of the work that, um, that it takes to do that, you have to have 
a big why, because otherwise you won't do it because it's Absolutely. so hard. I mean, some days are great and it's easy and you're like, this is amazing. Of course, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But some days you're like, well, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's the, it's the why that, that helps you through on those days when you're like, what on earth? Yeah. Someone I interviewed said something about um, keeping the highs and the lows of, of what you're doing as balanced as possible, especially entrepreneurs, because we all, if you own your own business, it's exactly what you just said. There are days where you say there's nothing else I'd rather do. And there are days definitely that you say, wow, I, I wish I could just get my paycheck. <laughs> right. I, I sometimes say, I, I miss the days where I didn't know where the paycheck was coming from. It was just on my table, you know? Right. You didn't have to worry. Do I have money in the bank? Uh, how are we on cash flow? All these other uh, things that really put a lot of stress on an entrepreneur and, and blind your ability to do the best job you can do. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, it's I've heard it described in a million different ways, like being an entrepreneur. And I think it's a roller coaster. Like there's the parts where you're like, this is fun. And then there's the parts where you're like, this is terrifying. And, <laughs> and sometimes they're happening at the same time. Um, so, yes, but uh, it's, it's definitely a f fun adventure. And uh, so, so besides the why, I love asking about bucket lists. Yeah. I know you're a mom and uh, you also want to talk about that and, and the life balance with, with uh, being a mom and being an entrepreneur and bucket list. So I'm, <laughs> I'm mixing both questions, I know, but uh, let, let's talk about the, the life balance before. How, how have you found that change, uh, being a mom and having to, to juggle all those things? It is a constant challenge. And I think the idea of always being in balance, I had to let go of the idea of being in balance like every day, like every day is balanced equally among things. And it's more like holistically, maybe over a week or a month, like long range. Do I feel like I'm getting enough work time and home time and because day to day things change. And so if I, if I analyze every day, like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't spend enough time with him today. Or, you know, I was at this long conference and I, I missed bedtime. Like if I try to do that every day, I'll fail every day. But if I have a longer range view of balance, then, then I am pretty successful. You know, I make sure that I take time, you know, I, t I take him to school every day and unless I, unless I absolutely can't. And, um, so I've structured my weeks so that I can get as much balance as I can. And that that's, works for me. That sounds like a good strategy. The long range view of balance. I like that. I absolutely do. And then there's no other way to do it if you own your own business. Like, yeah, I'm just coming out of very hectic two weeks. And now it's like this weekend is going to be all about the kids. Because that that's what you you feel you need to put extra in that uh, emotional bank account that the, right. the kids the kids have. Um, Absolutely. And then as long as you're, tr you know, I think, and this, this goes for, you know, anybody, you know, as long as you're thinking about it, I think, I think you're doing okay, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you can't, you, nobody's perfect. And so if you're trying, you're probably doing better than you think you are. Yeah. That is true. That just being aware. No, some people say just the fact that you're aware of things, it's already the first step towards whatever it is that you want to achieve. Right. So, and so bucket lists. Do you have I, any bucket list? Anything that you say, wow, if I don't have any issues, you know, with my work, with financially anything at all? No, I don't have a bucket list. What I have is sort of this. I think weirdly about death, like I have this app that reminds me five times a day that I'm going to die, which is weird and a little <laughs> morbid, but it's also very grounding. Like I don't have, my time here is finite. And sometimes you get caught up in things that don't really matter. And so that little, it's almost like the, uh, your podcast about the hurricane, like it, it, it kind of reminds you, okay, I have to focus on what, what's important. Cause, cause not everything is as important as you make it out to be. Um, so Really, my, I guess what would be ideal on my bucket list is if sometime in my life, I really was living a centered and present life, you know, where I wasn't letting my future get ahead of, you know, spending too much time worrying about my future or thinking too much about my past. And I was just enjoying where I was more than I'm not. Yeah. 
I like that. It's uh, well, if you're if you have something reminded you that your time is fin finite, then it's almost like you don't need a bucket list. That makes sense. <laughs> you are not waiting for other time. You're just you're just tackling things as they come. It sounds Although like. Although that makes it sound like I'm a lot more enlightened than I am. I mean, I screw up things all the time. I spend too much time on Facebook sometimes. I, you know, I, you know, mindlessly surf TV. It's certainly, a, it, it's a well, work in progress. But there's the guilty pleasures of life. You cannot take everything out of the equation. That's, that's true. <laughs> right. And, you so, know, sometimes I can't think of, like, I just have to have some mindless time. Yeah, absolutely. Because, well, it's one of the things. Would that be one of the questions I usually do? If you had an hour for you to do anything, what would it be? Would that be kind of saying, let me just uh, skim through Facebook? Or is there any place that you like to go to say, yes, this did it? Oh, I love being at the beach. But if I could, if I could choose like any time or experience that I could magically transport myself to for an hour, it would be a beach in a place that has no light pollution so that you could really see the stars because it's, I, I don't often get that into that situation because you, you would, you would usually have to camp to do that. And I don't like camping. So, uh -huh. but to be someplace where there's no light pollution and you can see all of the stars and you hear the ocean, it puts everything in perspective because we are very small and everything else is so big. And um, I don't know, it, it, it's like the other events that happen in your life that kind of focus your attention on what is really important. And so if I could hang out in a space like that for an hour, that would be awesome. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess that's the power of the beach. It's probably the most uh, common answer. And you can tell why when we go on vacation, uh, the beach is such a popular destination or an island or something like that, because I think we don't get to experience the world anymore, you know, as as uh, uh, you know, your our, our ancestors did. I I know my dad was born in 1934. He's still alive. He's 85. But he tells me the stories when he was growing up in Sicily, where the guy would pass every night uh, turning on the the candles of the street because uh, electricity wasn't always there. So by default, they were exposed to seeing the stars. Right. And they were exposed to, to, to a bunch of things that, unfortunately, modern living has removed from us, has taken away from us. And I think that's why it's harder and harder for our generate this, all these generations that we have all this uh, technology around us to really connect to, to our essence. Yeah. In fact, you know, the first time I saw the sky, like, like I'm talking about where there's no light pollution and you can really see some amazing stuff. I had no idea I, I, because I'd never seen it like that. So I was walking around, I was on a boat looking up and I couldn't, I couldn't not stare at the sky. And I almost broke my leg because I fell into like this <laughs> hole on the boat because I was just so awestruck by, by the space. And um, so, yeah, I do think that we, we get comfortable you know, in our, in our regular living environment. And, and so it, it does, it does one good to get back to even a little bit of nature. In fact, there was a, I can't remember who it was, but someone was telling me a story about a, some sort of guru that she had worked with and uh, had asked them if what the, what is the biggest impediment between people and the earth? And he was like, shoes, like you just, you lose something when you're not experiencing you know, grounding, grounding yourself in nature, barefoot, you know. Wow. And that might be why a lot of people like the beach, whether they know it or not. It's that barefoot, like you are on the earth. Wow, that's, that's, uh, I hadn't thought of that, but it makes a total sense. So even more reason to plan the, our next vacation at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around your yard barefoot, you know. Yes, and I like the idea of the vacation, but no, I'm kidding. Yes, true, true. <laughs> but uh, no, this, um, Kristen, has been great. It's, uh, you definitely has given me very good insight. I have to plan my next vacation, <laughs> walk barefoot. We have to do more about these things. And I hope everybody that listens to this uh got inspired by your story. I think you really uh, are getting to do what makes you happy in a way that 
that inspires me because it's almost like your life has been very, for well, of course, in the short amount that we've had to talk about your life, I'm sure there's plenty more, uh, but um, that you kind of follow your instinct, it sounds to me, and it's landed you in a place where, where you sound happy and you're really good at what you're doing. So hopefully you, you are happy at that because I, I love to read so much more about you. Oh, well, thank you. It's, uh, I, I am. It's, it's been certainly, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have it all together, but it's another puzzle to figure out. And, and I do like doing that. So, um. Well, that, that's great. And I thank you for taking the time to, to chat with, with me. And uh, I'm sure that uh, many, many people of, the, of those that are downloading the podcast <laughs> are going to enjoy, enjoy this episode. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I look forward to maybe meeting you the next time you're up in D.C. That would be wonderful. Absolutely. This is uh, definitely uh, we have a date and uh, and uh, I appreciate you and I keep shooting for the stars. I think you're definitely on to something great. Oh, thank you so much, Letitia. <laughs> thank you, Kristen. Take care. All right. Bye bye. And until the next time. <laughs>